Shiny new building. An actual building for once. Hey everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. As you can see, I have been a little bit busy. When I picked out these flooring patterns and started laying out all these working areas, I kept telling myself that I was just doing that until I knew the extent of how far the machines would stretch, and eventually I would build proper buildings for all these areas. Well, I mean... I keep finding excuses not to do that. So I realized that I was just bullshitting myself, and for the Applied Energistics area, I would just build a building straight away so that I cannot bullshit myself. So I did that. I'm... Uh, I'm not really good at building pretty. I mean, I, I, I put a little bit of effort into this, though. I made kind of... The, the roof is mana glass and elf glass. It's kind of a transparent force field-looking thing. And I built some metallic struts around it that could be force field projectors. Um, I used this carpenter's garage door for the entrance and these nearly invisible pressure plates. It looks pretty cool from the inside. I like how it looks from the inside. Yes. Anyway, you can see that it is very nice and bright and clean and sterile and lab-like looking inside. I have laid out a big cube. This is where our ME controller cube will be. It is far, far bigger than I am ever going to need, but I just wanted to lay out something excessive that I could grow into and that I will probably never maximize. And I wanted all the blocks laid out so that I can do the routing around that. We have a small crafting area and in the basement, we have the Spaghetti Machine Mark II. Yes. I think it actually ended up a little bit more comprehensible this time around. Um, it's easiest to see it from the back. Yes, you see... I integrated the thermionic fabricators directly into the build. These things are just loaded up with resources. And so long as they're loaded up with resources, they'll feed directly into the things that need them. These just smash the tubes into the circuits, pulls them out, puts them into the assemblers using simple color routing. On the back here, this, these three pipes coming up on the back are linked to the logistical transporter. It's being run underground. And on the right side, we have these hoppers. Because I found that no matter how what I tried, for some reason, the silicon, the printed silicon, that's what's coming into those hoppers. You see they're full of it. For some reason, sometimes the logistics pipes would send more than one, and it would get confused, and it would insert into this middle so slot and get jammed. So I built these hoppers as a buffer, and they can only load one at a time, and it all works perfectly fine. Over on the front side here, we have our three silicon presses, and we have the crusher with the sand. I built another crusher just up in our factory area. And this is all geared up more or less for full automation. All I need to do is hook it up with a supply of sand and of all the parts for all these uh, thermionic fabricators, which the only one that's going to be difficult is, is automating pure certus quartz. Ah, yes, and I, I moved the the crystal grow bed down here. I will probably have to build a bigger area for it when I figure out how I am going to automate that. Anyway, as of right now, the only thing that it really needs to... that, that really needs to be brought in from off-site is all of the chipsets. But once you load them up, it more or less just goes on its own. You see everything is being put in its place. Yep, it goes smashy smashy. All three of them work completely properly. The silicon will keep on being smashed down and filling up all of those. And we have in the up chest quite a lot of processors. Oh my yes. I have built up a supply. 
And that is pretty much what I did between episodes. The only other thing I did is up here in our Thumbcraft area, I decorated the Super Melter. Yes, I just used these arcane stone uh, random through chisel. I used two different types. One is covering the logistics pipe. The other is covering the essential tubes. I used the beveled and the... And it, it looks kind of interesting. It looks like a big magical alchemy device. So yeah, I think that without farther ado... Oh yes, and... Um, I had, in fact, to uh, purify some Flux Crystal because I needed that for our ME controllers. Ooh. It's just one of these new processors that our spaghetti machine is making for us. Some pure Fluix, which is just made the exact same way as the Certus, except, you know, with, with Fluix powder. And some Skystone blocks, which are smelted Skystone. And Skystone, you have to get by trading two Living Rock to the Elves. Did, what? What the heck? Did, did you all just see that? What the heck just happened? What? What? <sighs> that was weird. Let's take two. There! M.E. Controller! This is going right on the cube. Uh, strictly speaking, I don't need this right away, but it's always a good thing to build first. Because, you see, applied energistics, all, well, most applied energistics take something called a channel. Channels travel over these Fluix cables, and by default, you can only have up to eight channels. To get more than that, you need these ME controllers. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to put it down right here. Oh, look at it light up and glow. Oh, that is sexy. Mm. Okay, well, yeah, each face of the ME controller will produce another eight channels. So out this bottom face that the Fluix cable is already coming out, I can hook up to eight devices. At this side face, I can hook up another eight. Out this face, another eight. Well, actually, eight is just the amount of channels that this basic cable can carry. Each face actually produces 32 channels, but I need a more advanced cable to carry that, and we will get into that later. Anyway, just having that sitting there glowing and wasting my electricity is one thing. But in order to make use of it, I'm going to need a couple more devices. First of all, I'm going to need some ME drives. That's very simple. That's just some engineering processors, some cable, and some iron. Like so. And into that ME drive, I'm going to have to put some ME disks. It can hold quite a few of them. And I am just going to run the cable back over here. Maybe I'll hide it better in the future. But for just right now, I'm going to put it right there. Yeah. So, that is where items will ultimately be stored. I'm going to have to make some ME disk drives. It has a slot for a bunch of them. And those will all store tons and tons of items. But... In order to access those items, I need to make myself a terminal. I would like a crafting terminal, yes. But to get that, I'm just going to need a baseline terminal. And for that, I'm going to need formation, annihilation, formation and annihilation. I'm going to need those cores, and I'm going to need this panel, which is just some quartz glass and glowstone. All that. It's all very simple. Okay, and then it's just going to need that panel. And you see we get three of them from that single recipe. That's very good. So let's start with the baseline terminal. For that, I'm going to need that. And th for this, I need Fluix dust, specifically dust. That's purified. That's regular. Okay. That, that, and Zot, I think. Is it in that order? No. How does... 
How does it do? Yeah, it's just that, dust, and... Oh, okay. It's not shapeless. Okay, and then the Nether Quartz will get me the Annihilation Cores. And that I combine with all that to get a terminal. Now, just this terminal is enough to actually access the network, but I am immediately going to want to upgrade this to something better because I don't just want to access my items. I want to, you know, use them without having to have a billion crafting tables all sitting around. So I'm going to immediately upgrade this to a crafting terminal. It is not that much harder. I just take that same terminal and I soup it up with a crafting table and a calculation processor. And one of those. Ooh, a much bigger table. Yes, this will not only let us see the items on our network, but it will give us a crafting table. So all my items will be in here and I can just take them and I can craft them and it works with any eye and it is amazing. Now, next I need to actually make some space in my ME drive to put items in. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to want to do something. I am going to want to link this thing up to my drawer network. Because, yeah, you can do that. To do that, I'm going to need to make a storage bus. You see, this is... It requires something called an ME interface, which is just some iron in those cores and some glass. I need a supply of glass on hand. <sighs> Shortly, it will all be so much easier when I can have this all unified. But that's what we're working on. So two of those for those and the formation and an annihilation cores. Doop doop, doop doop, uh, doop a doop, and I should have got the pistons while I was out there. Just take that, and that, and that. Excellent. What the storage bus will do is it will take a channel and it will hook on to any storage. Why are you still going? Shut up. It will hook up to anything with storage and it will add it to our ME network. It will make it accessible. So, for example, I can slap it on this chest here and if I wired that up to our ME controller, I would be able to see all the contents of this chest back at my terminal. But that's kind of lame. What I really want to do is I want to put this up on a drawer controller slave. Because, remember, to the internal programming of the game, a drawer network is just one really big inventory. So in other words, by putting a controller slave on this drawer and by putting a storage bus on that, the ME net will be able to see everything inside of these drawers all at once. Oh yeah. And then I just need to take 14 pieces of wood, of which I am completely out of, of course. Screw it, I'll just use great wood. I don't know who I'm talking to, because I know that I'm going to be editing this out. Makes a that. Yes. Okay, now all I need to do is I'm going to place this, say, right here, right at the very edge of things. And then I just need to route it underground into my storage network. So I just place zot za. And we start to go. Mm, 
that's unfortunate. Okay. Well, it just means I'm going to have to run it down that way. Okay, that's that's my best estimate for how far that... Yeah, look at that. Okay, and then I can just wall that up. And that'll be available from the basement. Oh, uh, before I forget, there is something that I should do. I should program the storage bus. I believe I can do that even before it has power. So it's just right over here. I need to right-click on it. Yes. And I'm going to tell it that this is a very high priority. I'm just going to click that an arbitrary number of times. And that'll tell it that um, any time that the ME net interacts with any of the goods it detects in that storage bus, in other words, any time I uh, deposit or withdraw any of the goods in this drawer net, it will go to the drawers first. And because these drawers are all voided, I will still have void safety. I won't have more than 2048 Essence of Nether. Well, I, I need to put more storage upgrades on that. But I, I won't have any more than the storage limit of any of my goods. They will be voided all successfully. So I'm just going to poke into the basement, like somewhere around here. There we go. Now I just need to run it over the ceiling of here. Yes. Let me actually come down a block, just so I'm not ruining the lovely steel tile ceiling here. I, of course, need crap tons more cable. I'm going to need to make stacks and stacks and stacks of Fluix cable, I imagine. And I'm just going to take my pure quartz, because, I mean... If you go through all the trouble of ore doubling, you might as well. And yeah, you see, that gives me tons and tons of cable. So just continue running that on down. Derp -a -derp -a -derp -a -derp -a -derp -a -derp And a derp. And that should give us signal. Oop. Look at that. Oh. And in fact, now that I have access to all that drawer stuff, I am just going to save myself a little bit of memory and I'm going to conceal that drawer net. I'm just going to hop into the underground real quick. And I'm going to find the controller and dupe. And you see, probably not strictly necessary, but eh, anything to help at this point. <laughs> oh my, yes. And note that anything we have on a compacting drawer, yeah, we got blocks, we got ingots, it all converts, even in the ME interface. This can lead to problems, actually. Like... Uh, let's say that I queued up some absurd recipe that required 90 diamond blocks and 100 diamonds. The ME system would look at that and say, well, I have 90 diamond blocks and I have 826 diamonds. That's perfectly fine. And it would attempt to do that. And then the recipe would get stuck until more diamonds are farmed. Because it wouldn't know that it didn't have enough diamonds in the first place. Uh, but, of course, I mean... 
this isn't Project Ozone 2 Kappa mode. There isn't going to be a recipe that calls for 90 diamond blocks. So I, I think that just with the system that I have, I should be mostly fine, you know? For the, for the most part, that's not going to be necessary. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, now let us make some ME drives to start storing everything else. So, I'm going to start with some... Well, okay, let, let's, let's do a quick aside about how the size of ME drives works. If I search up drive... Well, no. If I search up storage... Okay, let me... ME store... Yeah. You see these come in 1K, 4K, 16, and 64. And each of them... Okay. Each type of item that you store in an ME storage cell is going to cost you a couple of bytes of data just to store, you know, the, the type of item that it is. And then after that, each item you put in of that type is also going to take a couple of bytes of data. You can have up to 63 types of items on each disk, and then there's just a bunch of storage space to put on the rest. And it, it may not look like much, like just 65,000 bytes. You might think that's only 65,000 items. No. That translates to hundreds of thousands of items. These things are freaking immense. So really, the problem even with just a relatively small drive, is going to be the types, the number of types of item that we need to put into there, rather than the overall size of the drive. We will eventually want to upgrade everything to 64K ME drives, and anything that we have an infinite feed of, instead of having it coming into the drive, we're going to want that in the drawer net, and we're going to make, want to make sure that is, uh, that that is safely voided. But anything that we aren't getting infinitely, stuff that we are just storing or intermediary products or other things like that, yeah, we we are going to have Buku storage just with relatively small drives. So I'm going to start with these 4K drives. Um, all drives have pretty much the same recipe. It's just that storage component in the center that changes. And you can, in fact... Uh, take that component out and you get this empty storage housing that you can then combine with any of those parts to get a storage drive. So, you know, these things are upgradable. But the the storage component there in the center is the really expensive bit. You see that it takes usually a bunch of AE2 products and it takes three of the previous tier. The 4K is going to require three 1Ks, and these 1Ks are going to take lots of logic processors. This is what I meant when I said that we are going to need stacks and stacks and stacks of the gold processors, because that is going to be very expensive. But for right now, I think I'm just going to make, let's see, one, two, three, four, um... 4K storage cells. That should be sufficient to get me started. So what's this? Yeah, that's just going to require storage components. And notice that I have this little X here on the crafting grid. I press that. It all gets injected into my storage. And note that even though I don't have a single disk drive right now, it all stored because that was all items I have in the drawer net. And it went right to the drawers. It is in fact possible to run an entire ME net entirely off of huge drawer cubes. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because it's going to cost you a lot of memory, even with the drawers obscured, but it is possible. So then I'm just going to need redstone, quartz glass, and calculation processors. Okay, so Take those 4K storage components. Doop. A doop, a doop, a doop. A doop. And what was the center thing? Uh, the coarse glass? Yes, a doop. Okay, so that is four 4Ks. 
And notice that it couldn't store these because they are not in the drawer net. Okay, so I need to set this into uh, NEI synchronized. Now if I type up there, I can, it searches NEI at the same time. Okay, and then I just do that. Better than chests, yes. So I have this ME 4K storage cell. I can put this in the drive. You notice that it lights up. And now, if I take some quartz glass and I put it in the ME net, it actually accepts it. And if I look over here, you see uh, one of 63 types and it took up 35 bytes. Most of that storage space is probably just the the um, the data to, well, let's see how much this costs. So it's empty again now. If I go over there, we'll see it's, it's perfectly fine. If I put in a single unit of quartz glass, that took 33 bytes. But every quartz glass after that, yeah, see, that didn't even take up a full byte. And if, uh, yeah, see? An item is much less than a byte. If I throw in all of them, all, all like 25 out of those, that was only two bytes more of data. Yeah. So let's just shove all of the things into there. Okay, and let's make the remaining 4K drives. Oops. There we go. And I am just going to go and I am going to move most of my chests into my ME net. That is going to take me a moment, so I will be RB. Hmm. Okay, I've moved over most of my technical bits and bobs, and notice that this light on the ME drive has turned orange. That means that this drive is holding all 63 types that it can, but its storage is not full yet. It can hold no more types of items, but it can still hold lots more items. And it's a bit more than half full, and I decided, yeah, I'll upgrade to 16K. So I'm just going to take these other empty 4Ks out, and I am going to pop their storage components out. And I'm just going to take them on over here. And I am going to... I should be able to... Uh, come on. Okay, fine. 16K. And... Yep, just going to take that and do that. Now... That is kind of the easy part, getting the drive itself. Next up, I am going to have to get everything on this drive into this drive. Now, I could just, like, disconnect my cable from the back here and do the old drive shuffle in hand. Like, you know, take a bunch of stuff out of the terminal, uh, take the 4K drive out, put the 16K drive in, put it back in. That is possible to do. But there is a automated way to do that. I need an MEIO port. This thing. It's just two ME drives and some other miscellany. That is easy enough, especially now that I can just do this and this and this and that. Yeah. Oh, crafting is so much easier now. <laughs> anyway, with this thing on the network, I can take, I can put this thing in it, and you see I can do transfer data to storage cell, meaning that if I put this storage cell in here, it will search my network for items on the network, and I will actually disconnect from my storage drawer net, just to make sure. Yeah, see, storage drawer net is gone. All I have is the items that I have in the drive. So, I will just put in this disk drive, and now, after a couple moments, yeah. Notice that it's still about half full, 
as the storage cells get bigger, the amount of data that takes up each type grows a little bit larger. And that was the bulk of the storage cost before. So it's about half full before, it's about half full now, but I have about 8k of storage as versus 2k. And remember, a single item is much, much less than a byte. And now this drive is empty, and I can just pop it out, and I will upgrade these other three drives to 16k, because I am not quite done moving yet. Most of the stuff sitting out there is all just miscellaneous decoration stuff and various other knickknackery. But I might move it in, and it's nice to have space for the future. One thing that I've brought up before that you might want to play with is the network tool. This thing is very simple. It's just a bunch of parts you've already seen me create. These wrenches are just made out of a little bit of quartz. It will allow you, if you right-click it on a wire, it will allow you to see all the devices on that network and how much power it is costing you to run the network. These things don't run for free. You see that this little network here, our storage drive and all that, is going to cost us 80 RF per tick. Now, even though these drives are empty, if I take one out, that saves us about 8 RF per tick. Yeah. Every disk drive in, the, in, in there, everything we hook up to the network, it's going to cost more and more and more RF. And if we go downstairs, remember how I was talking about how much the, uh, the crystal growth thing is going to cost? Well, I overestimated it a little bit. But see, if I look at it now, it's costing zero because it's off. But if I turn it on, wait for a moment to let it warm up, yeah, it costs about 200 RF per tick. It's still climbing because this thing, I believe, takes an average over several seconds. Yep. Yeah. Less than I thought, but still not exactly cheap. That is about a fifth of our total power generation. And I have a bunch of other devices running at the same time, too. I think if I turned on everything in my base at once, I would not have enough power to run everything. So pretty soon, we are going to have to increase our power generation. But in the meantime... Why don't we use our lovely new system to just quickly grind out a couple of quests just for the halibut? Ah uh, yes, um, making that factory thingy turned out to be a quest. It gave me some more of them. I used it to upgrade the crusher, the new crusher. So let us... Um, okay, to finish off this first chapter, I need to find some essence berry bushes. They are the one thing you can find underground. I have been digging around everywhere. I have not found one yet. I have gotten really unlucky. So, next one over here. Ah, yes. I killed the Wither, and then I had to kill the Guardian of Gaia again. But that was easy. That just gives me a green heart. And then uh, making the Flugel, the Flugel Tiara turned out to be another quest. That just gives me this greater band of mana. That is basically a wearable mana tablet. If, well, I'm not going to put it on. But if I had a spare ring slot, and if I didn't have a mana mirror, I could fill that thing up with mana from a pool somewhere, and um, it would just operate just like a mana tablet. And the greater one holds a crap ton of mana. But I really don't care. Is it even usable? Oh, it's full. Eh, well, that's nice. Goodbye. Those Gaia spirits, I think I'll just hold on to. I haven't moved over my Batania stuff. Maybe I should. Anyway, is there anything that we can just craft real quick that would be uh, good for the quest? That Timeless Ivy. I think that what Timeless Ivy does is... It allows items to uh, repair using mana, just like mana, mana steel, uh, armor, tools, and all that stuff does. Um, there's nothing I really need to put that in on, and it's not compatible with Tinker's Construct tools anyway. 
And anyway, I, I, like I said, I haven't moved over the Batania stuff. So, Teaches. Teaches. This would be good. So, let's make a... Let's make an atlas. So, I need to make an empty map, a drafting compass, and a jungle map. Well, I imagine any wood map frame. So, map. That empty map is just a bunch of sheets of paper and some dye. Okay. I do not have any paper. Well, that is easy enough to fix. And note that even though I only put in a small amount, when I shift-clicked, I got as close to a stack of paper as it could do. And the sugarcane stays in there, so I can do that again. And I can just get tons and tons of paper really, really quickly. So, did I move in my black dye? Ink. Yes, I did. Okay, that gives me an empty map. And then I believe it was called a drafting compass. Yes. Okay, that's going to need some flint tool rods, apparently. So I'm going to need to withdraw some of my flint. And those, I believe, I actually have to go and make on a Tycon table. It's been a while since we used the old park builder, hasn't it? There we go. Couple flint tool rods. Okay. And I should just be able to uh, get that. Yep. And the final thing it wanted was a map frame. That looks just, like, really easy. Okay, so it's a bunch of sticks around a slab. Hopefully spruce will work. It would be a pain to go and get jungle wood. Yep, that is the quest. That gives us some more maps. And now it wants us to make the atlas. Okay. So, what is the atlas going to cost us? That is just a bunch of those tools and a slotted book, which is just a book and a label. Okay. Well, I already know how to make labels. And that gets me that. Yep. What does this do? I think it holds an item and lets you look at it. Okay. Anyway. Atlas. The Atlas is actually really, really cool. If I take it, you notice that it looks like a map when I'm holding it in my hand. Well, it's a bit more than that. Let's see. Let me zoom all the way out. Automatically. Auto center, yes. Auto create, yes. If I load this thing up with maps, do I have to. Which slot? There we go. You notice that it starts filling on out just like a vanilla map. And I can see myself on it. And somehow in this interface, I think, yeah. I can, like, create waypoints and notes and stuff like that using this interface that I've never really used before. Like, um, home. Yeah. Okay, so then if I run away a little bit. Should start to generate more. And there you see the, uh, the little green pointer for home is still sitting right there. Anyway, the really nice thing about this is, maybe I shouldn't have zoomed all the way out, but let me just uh, run and run and run and run. If I run all the way to the edge here, then it will swap in another map and it will start drawing automatically. And then if I run back to this one, it'll switch back to this map. So essentially I have a automatic 
th this is the replacement for Journey Map in this pack, basically. Maybe I should have made it a lot sooner. It would have saved me making all those Guidance Pillars, but meh. Truth be told, I don't really like it that much. It's really, really neat. I just don't like the look and feel of vanilla maps, and the waypoints aren't that good, and... Uh... Anyway. I guess I'll just hold on to that. Yeah, why not? I don't, I won't put it in the any net though, because yeah. Anyway, that is a really cool atlas for us. Gave me more maps. Neat. I don't think I scanned the maps. Huh? Really? Maps are vanilla. You think they would? Anyway, that can all just go away. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown out that flint. Oh, well. Um, next up, wants me to make the Book of Biomes from Witchery. That's a witchery book I forgot. Book of Biomes. That's a bunch of really simple stuff. There, that's a good start on our books. I think when I automate that, I'll just do it with the, the Tinker's pattern recipe, but oh well. Let's put away these experience drops. Okay, so what was it I make? Book of Biomes. And it needs feather. I haven't put in feathers yet, because I'm going to link in that chicken farm, and that is an infinite source of resources. So actually, let's make a drawer, and let's put a voided feather drawer and egg drawer on our drawer net. So yeah, let's make a couple drawers. And it's been a while since I've emptied this thing. Maybe it's, like, chock full. It's not really low. Ah, yes. One thing to note is that drawers, they don't just hold a set amount of items. They hold a set amount of stacks. And because eggs only stack to 16, yeah, this drawer holds a lot less than you might be used to. Anyway, I should have gotten all three. One for the... wait, the meat? Why do I have chicken meat? Why did chicken... I am down to my last chicken. Where have all the... wow. Okay. Um, I, I guess that... Um, while I'm here, let's spawn some more chickens. How did that happen? But yeah. So let's just lock these. Doop, doop. And let's cart them over to our drawer net. Oh, and let's actually... Well, no, I won't obscure them until I have them voided. But yeah, eventually I'm going to figure out a way to get this chest linked up to the ME net. And when that happens, I'm going to want feathers and eggs to be um, voided. Well, you, you know, they're going to be an infinite source, so I want to practice safe storage. So I'm going to want these drawers to have void upgrades, and that's where I'm going to want the items to end up, ultimately. Anyway, now we have feathers. So, book of biomes. Click. Now, I, I think this literally just lists out the biomes. Oh, I, I see. Um, it's... Needed for the right of shifting seasons. Okay. Yeah. And now it wants me to make the extended edition. That is what I was thinking of. Uh, the Book of Biomes extended edition actually has an interesting little bit of use. You can take a bit of paper, from what I understand, and you can copy a biome out of it, and that allows you to use that page in a special witchery ritual 
that can terraform an area into that biome, I think. It's interesting. Anyway, I'll, I'll just keep that in there. So that, oh, now it actually wants me to make that. Okay, so um, I think the way you do it is you take a sheet of paper and you craft them together. Yeah. And see, because it's, okay, so the book should read the same as the previous one. Oh, no, it's interesting. Okay. So I, I set it to, like, planes. And then, yeah, it would get me a page of planes, which I would then use in a certain ritual to terraform an area into a planes biome. So, well, what do you know? It wants planes. Okay. Neat. I will just keep that book of biomes in the ME net because it is actually useful, and I'll throw that out. Okay. Uh, next up, it wants me to make these Tycon books. Materials in U, 1 and 2, Tinker's Weaponry, Mighty Smelting. Okay. Uh, so... What does materials and you cost? It's just a, well, okay. Well, I mean, how do you, what? What? Okay, ah, uh, okay, that's, that's much more sane. Okay, so if I take that and I take some paper, then I get volume one. Okay, and then I think that just crafts straight up to volume two. Quest confirmed. And I think that crafts again into the others, into Mighty Smelting and into Tinker's Weaponry. And those are just pure reference books. I don't really need them. And then I want a diary of a tinker. Okay, okay. And that's that is the only bit of lore that Tinker's Construct has. So diary of a tinker. Of course. Of course. Of course, of course, of course. So here we go again. There we go. Diary of a Tinker. Uh, do. Okay. Now that Atlas one, it said it unlocked a quest, I think. Yeah, it teaches, unlocks one quest elsewhere. So let's see if we can find that. It must be this one in Embraces. I don't think I recognize that. And that would be a waypoint compass, yeah. Uh, you can program, this is just a compass that you use with the atlas. You tell it to uh, point to one of the waypoints that, I, that you saw how to make, and it will always point there. So I could have a, a compass that always points home, for example, which is very, very neat. Okay, well, I think that is enough quest grinding just for the moment. That was all lovely, lovely progress, just getting those numbers up. So, how about next up, we start to do some of the really fun stuff with, with Applied Energistics. Why don't we start to get our auto-crafting network up and going? So, for that, we are just going to need these crafting units. They are just a bunch of very simple materials. I think I will take two of them just to get me started. Strictly speaking, I only need one, but it is always nice to have a little a little extra. One of those will be a coprocessor unit, and one of those will be a storage unit for which I need to make another uh, storage thing. I will just make a... Eh, I'll make it a 16k. Why not? Why not? One of those. Which I can just combine with this. 
to get my crafting storage unit. And this I think I will actually do up here, yes. So I need my cable. So this is kind of the brain of the storage of the auto crafting system that I am making right here. If I take these two things, yeah, you see just putting down the storage is enough. That is technically all that's necessary. But like, let's, let's say that I have, um, if I want to make an iron sword, for that I need sticks. Well, that's a bad example. Um, okay, let's, let's say that I wasn't storing things in compacting drawers, and I just had everything collected into iron blocks. I could have a recipe to turn the iron blocks back into ingots, and I could have a recipe to smash wood logs down to, to planks and those planks down to sticks, right? With just the storage unit sitting there, it will do all that one at a time. First it will smash the logs, then it'll do the sticks, then it will smash the blocks down to ingots. With this crafting code processing unit, it will be able to smash the block down to ingots, and it will be able to smash the wood down to sticks at the same time. And the more of these co-processing units, the more parallel processes it will be able to do at once. So that is very, very neat. And I think I will actually start sucking off a new face. There we go. And that should light up. There we go. But that is just the brains of the unit. Next up, we need to actually make the working hands of the unit. So next up, I need to make ME interfaces and I need to make molecular assemblers. Um, you've seen ME interfaces before, but these molecular assemblers are a little bit special. Uh, it's going to require more formation and annihilation cores, so we're going to need tons and tons of those. And remember, each of these are still more logic processors. We need stacks and stacks and stacks of logic processors. And it's also going to take these crafting tables. I remember the very first time I played Regrowth. I actually got to the point that I was making an ME system, and at the time, we didn't have this alternate recipe for for crafting tables. And it sucked trying to make molecular assemblers because the hatchet recipe does not work with ME auto-crafting. And you are going to want to auto-craft these. Anyway. <clears throat> I thought those required the... Oh, I'm thinking of storage buses. Derp. Derp and derp derp. Herp -a -derp, -a derp derp Well, we have sticky pistons for later, I guess. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. And then we are going to need to make a bunch of crafting tables. And then a bunch of assemblers. I'm out of quartz glass. I'm out of glass glass. <laughs> that is how this is going to go. So. Okay, well, let's just do what we can then. Two of them. Okay. Okay, so these molecular assemblers are kind of like auto crafting tables. I can actually load them up with a recipe and then I can pull out of them so long as they're supplied with items, but that is a kind of crap way to use them. Instead, what I want to do 
is I want to take these ME interfaces and I want to get as many molecular assemblers touching each one as possible. Now, these ME interfaces can hold these patterns, which I haven't built yet. They are uh, called blank, well, at their base they're called blank patterns. They're relatively simple to construct. And those blank patterns can be programmed in a special terminal called a pattern terminal, which I have not built yet. And that will allow me to, well, I'll just show you as I go. So first let's make that pattern terminal. That is just going to be a any crafting terminal and an, okay, well, here we go. And for that, and for that, and for that. Yep. Okay. And then I believe I'm going to need yet another crafting table, but that's okay. I have one. So well, let's keep on on that line. So like that. And then like uh, that. Yep. Crafting maestro. Let's just put it front. Well, no, let's put it down there just for now. This is not where my terminal is going to be forever, by the way. I'm going to have a whole bunch of terminals everywhere, but I think my main terminal with all the auto crafting programming, I'm going to put somewhere more properly. This is just for the moment. And also, let's see here. One, two, three, four. Yep, we're taking up about half of this cable right now. Okay. So in this one, all the, well, let me craft some blank patterns. Let me just talk about it as I go. So these blank patterns, I'm going to make a couple. I am out of quartz glass, of course. Quartz glass. Ugh. Yes. Let's just start by making 10 of these. Okay. These blank patterns go right here, and then, well, it's on my mind. Let's do quartz glass first. So if I take the recipe for quartz glass over here, I program it just like a so with all these ghostly items. Doop, 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 doop. You notice that that confirms the recipe, and I can press this button to encode a pattern. You see, it's this little item here. If I hold down shift, I see what it is. And then I can go and put this in this ME interface over here. And now, if I hook this up to our network, you notice that these molecular assemblers all light up and they spread signal and power through them. So this interface is also hooked up. And the interface is the only thing that's costing a channel. Molecular, uh, molecular assemblers, they just cost a little bit of power. So we want a lot of them, all touching the ME interface on as many faces as possible. Because each face that is touching the interface will allow that interface to do the recipe in parallel. So... Um, Okay, let, let me show you. Quartz glass. If I take all these out, notice that I now have it there saying craft. So, um, quartz glass is made four at a time, I do believe. So if I just ordered four, it'll use one of those molecular assemblers to make me four. But if I ordered up eight, it would do both of them. And it could do as many as there are assemblers touching it. So the more assemblers you have touching, the faster it goes. And those assemblers themselves can also be accelerated. So if you do the investment and if you build smart, you can make assembly very, 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 very fast. And you see that, ah, it says that I am missing surface quartz dust, so I cannot do this craft. I do believe I have some surface quartz dust Witten for me. Okay, now I've got the surface quartz dust in there. Now I can do quartz glass. You see? 
And notice how it's coming in eight at a time instead of just four? Yep. Two molecular assemblers. And I think that crafting coprocessors work into that too. So, I'm just going to make a bunch of recipes for all these little applied energistics things. First of all, a wise thing to make is blank patterns. And I don't want, I just want Certus for that. Oh, that wasn't charged after all. That was just Certus. Okay. Blank pattern for, oh, another thing I should make. Another thing I should make. The third type of terminal I'm going to need. I am going to need an interface terminal. You see, that's just a panel and an interface. Well, interfaces we can make. That's easy. I believe I need more panels. Also easy. And then it's just that processing unit. Easy, easy, easy. Now that I don't need to run around a billion inventories. The interface terminal will hook up to all ME interfaces on the network. So right now the only one we have is this one sitting on the molecular assemblers. And that will actually say molecular assembler. The interface will take on the name of whatever device it is sitting on. I think that even works for some things that it can't really trade with. Like, um, yeah, see, that one's sitting on ME Drive, so it's called ME Drive. And note that it was... I, I got that Network Apprentice. That's an achievement for having a network of uh, more than eight items, I think because interfaces all take up a channel, even if they aren't really doing anything. Anyway, yes. So, yeah, I can see that that interface on the molecular assemblers, and I can put patterns into it from here. So, when I have a tremendous tower of assemblers, I don't have to root through its guts to find a free assembler every time. I can just look in the interface terminal. And this is pretty much the setup you want for programming a auto crafting network. You want yourself a crafting terminal for your personal use, a pattern terminal for programming, and an interface terminal for sorting things out. Anyway, I've got my blank patterns. I'm going to want formation and annihilation cores. So let's just do the core. Well, that's going to be well, I can find it. Annihilation core. Formation core. A dupe and a dupe. And then any interface. A dupe. Now, another thing you should note is that auto crafting can take into account other, uh, other recipes you have programmed. So if I um, take out these cores I just programmed in, you see I have the crafting recipe right there. This ME interface requires them, and I don't have them. But I have the recipe for them programmed. So it says to craft. It will automatically craft that formation core and that annihilation core for me. And it lists all their ingredients out here, right here. Now, note that it says 130 bytes used. I'll just do that. And you see, I get my interface. That has to do with the crafting storage. The more things involved in a recipe, the more space it is going to take. And you notice that it took a 16K storage thing to make this storage, this uh, storage unit. Well, if I have more than 16K worth of items in a recipe, I will need more crafting storage. That is very unlikely, though. Quite frankly, a 4K probably would be sufficient. But it's nice to be a little bit excessive. Anyway, let us make Zoss and 
glass for my quartz fiber. And then I'll just make one. And my Fluix, I'll just use regular. No, I'll use pure. I need to figure out an automated purification system, and this will force me into it later on. <sighs> so yeah, we have the beginnings of something wonderful here. Oh, the, um, well, yeah, I'll get into more advanced stuff later. Anyway, how's our, how's our power drain? Ugh, it's already up to 100 RF per tick. Applied energistics costs an insane amount of power in this pack. So, I think... That that is actually where I am going to cut out for today. I've already showed you kind of the basics of how applied energistics is going to work for me. It's going to be my centralized storage solution, including a line to all my infinite resources, and it is going to be auto crafting for me. Later on, we'll get into some more advanced uses for auto crafting, including linking up with external machines, but that will be later. For right now, between episodes, I'm going to neaten out my network and decide kind of where I want things a bit more. And next episode, next time on Regrowth, we will be upgrading our power system. Because, quite frankly, that steam engine is probably not going to cut it for too much longer. So I will see you then.